Welcome back into From the East Side after a brief uh, spring break, we'll call it. Uh, I am your host, Kay Nagley, alongside Luke Evangelist, and this is TechSag's student podcast for students and even former students. We love our former student listeners. And today we are here with members of the Diamond Darlings. It is President uh, Annie Rayburn and then Vice President Jordan Little. So thank y'all for coming on first of all (laughs) thank you for having us yeah so i want to hear a little bit about y'all i think each person has a different story on why they came to texas a&m but what was it for each of you um so i actually didn't want to go to a&m at first um i could go anywhere because i was in the top 10 percent of my class but um i toured baylor and a bunch of other schools and i came to a&m last as like a last ditch effort Mm -hmm. and everyone was so nice on campus i just had like random people coming up to me and like talking and everyone was so kind holding like doors open they were nice to my parents and i was like this is it like it just i felt so good here and it like felt a lot smaller than it actually is Mm -hmm. so it like felt more like home like i I knew it i knew i was supposed to come here so this actually is home for me i was born and raised in bryan and so Opposite of Annie, I always knew it was A&M. I didn't apply anywhere else. I always knew I was going here. I'm really family oriented, so I wanted to stay close. And it's just co- growing up in Aggie Land. It's just it's home, and it'll always be home. So yeah. that's where I'm. That's at. awesome. That's awesome. When did y'all start following Aggie baseball? Um, so I started my freshman year of college. I didn't really any before I came to college. Um, so yes, my freshman year, went to a few games. It was really fun. Um, I applied for the Diamond Darlings my freshman year and I didn't get in. And so I just like kept going to games and stuff and then fell in love with it afterwards. So like I said, I'm from here. So I grew up, I've grown up around baseball like my whole life. My whole family was very baseball oriented. So mm-hmm. in high school, I started coming to the games with my dad and I absolutely fell in love. And like seeing the girls walk around just the concourse and stuff, I was like, when I get here, I know that's what I want to do. Yeah, so So as president and VP, y'all have a pretty good understanding of what Diamond Darlings fully entails. So if you could just tell our audience a little bit about just like on a game day, what's happening and even like the prep before. Okay, so there's a lot of different things that go on at the games. And in the past, it wasn't so much, but over time, it's kind of built into us doing more things um, on game days. So we do hand out Programs before the games will be uh, out in front of Bluebell just uh, talking to all the fans and everything. And we also work in the guest service booth. Um, we also help mark the marketing team with promotions, like throwing out T-shirts, the Whataburger, Fry Shuffle, all the fun stuff. Yeah. And then um, we do have two girls in each dugout. So okay. we getting all the, the, we're the girls with the big helmets yeah. on. They kind of look like bobbleheads out there. But and we yeah. fill up bubble machines. That's yeah. a big thing. Okay. We're the we bubble do. machine yeah. girls. Yeah. <laughs> gotta keep them big. Yeah. Gotta yeah. keep gotta have Especially them. this season. We've been refilling I know, a lot. I bet. I know. We love it when they come back for more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> you mentioned that you applied and didn't get it your first time. Well, thank goodness you did, and you're the president now. I know, full circle. Right? <laughs> That's crazy. Any thought to changing the application process? No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> what is the process like to apply, and uh, how long have y'all been in the organization? So we both, we got in the same year, so yeah. three years ago. Um, my sophomore year, her freshman year. And so there's four rounds. So the first round is informationals. The second round is applications. The third is a social round. And then the last is like more of a professional interview. Mm-hmm. So um, the social round's kind of like yeah. speed dating. It is. is. It like really is. Yeah. Correlate okay. it too. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. I mean, I like any other organization, there's a lot of different aspects and things you have to go yes. through. But y'all have been around this program for a long time. So just based on this season, they're 20, 22 and 3 right now. How do y'all think the team's fared this year so far? I think it's good. Like it's I, good. It, it looks exciting. really good. I, the fans are. It's just crazy. They're like, well, we've seen it for three mm-hmm. years. You know how games are going. And usually, when we get this far into the season, you start seeing people like not show up as much. You know, the fans. It's not packed. The midweeks. All yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like midweeks. We but try to get. It tickets. has been crazy. Like yeah. the fans are. It's packed all the time, and I love it. It's great energy. We tried to get tickets last week, and it was like fifty dollars to sit on the lawn. And I was oh like, Are you God. kidding me? <laughs> These are like four. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. There's a lot of. Buy- for this oh team right my goodness. Yeah. Right. So right. the fans are in it for sure. Yeah. yeah, they are. Yeah, how much of a role does Clo- uh, Coach Schloss play? And then what kind of interaction do y'all have with him? Um, so we love him. He's great. Um, he doesn't play a huge role, I feel like, in the Diamond Darlings much as much in like the kind of backstage mm-hmm. type of stuff. But um, we do like co- contact him all the time about like helping out with other things that the team's doing and stuff like that. And then um, we see him on game days. He's always like really great to us in the dugouts and everything. And that's awesome. 
Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> you all have a favorite memory just interacting with them, or? Um, I do. I, <laughs> <laughs> I was in working in the dugout in Hoover, Alabama, in the SEC tournament two years ago. Okay. And we were playing, I, th- I think it was Florida. I'm not sure. It was our first game in the tournament. Yeah. And me and another girl were working in there, and he was just in a fun mood. Like, Coach was so fun. And he just kept saying, like, get out of my kitchen, get out of my kitchen. And it was so <laughs> funny, and it just stuck. And, like, we laugh about it all the time. Get out of my kitchen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just so thought it was so funny. Like, we all laughed. That's so. hilarious. So, or go ahead. Oh, I was just saying, I actually had a story the other day, and it involves Texag. So, okay. I – got featured on one of the pictures with Coach Lausch, like on one of those st- articles or something, and everyone yeah. was like, oh my gosh, Jordan, like you're famous. Like I got tagged <laughs> in it so many times. So I was talking about it the other day, and he was like, well, you need to be careful what you wish for. You don't always want to stand next to me. And I was <laughs> like, okay, never mind. <laughs> you're like, all right, Coach, I'm going yeah. to go over yeah. here. <laughs> That's awesome. Every time we have him in the studio, he's a great guy. Yes. But more specifically, just outside of Coach Lausch and just with the team, do y'all have a favorite memory or game that each of y'all is just, it's stuck with y'all? Yeah, yeah. I actually got to go to the College World Series when we went yeah. two years ago, yeah. and I worked the dugout, and I think, I don't know what else could possibly happen that could top that, but that was probably yeah. by far my favorite. How many memory. girls travel whenever, say, like, SEC tournament, or you're going to, like, College as World many, Series? As many that yeah. want to and can. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. Oh, wow. mm-hmm. That's awesome. That's, mm-hmm. Y'all get to come along for the ride, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that sounds awesome. Uh, so just to get a better understanding of like what a week looks like for y'all and kind of a home series and maybe a midweek, do y'all rotate games or is everyone working the same game? So basically there's 20 of us. I don't know if we mentioned that. There's only 20. There has been since 1972 when we were founded. Um, so we, uh, usually, usually like around 11 or 12 girls work every single game. So you do have some games off, but majority of games you are working Tuesday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Mm-hmm. And um, it is a really big time commitment too, but... Other when we that, say Bluebell yeah. is home away from home, it's literally it, home away from home. home. Yeah. Yeah. We're spending a lot of time <laughs> yeah. there in the spring. Yeah. That's I awesome. love it, though. Wouldn't have it any other way. No. That's awesome. Uh, so is there a specific athlete that you all have watched over the years that you're just like, oh, I like, love that guy, or, or any like moment that you just remember oh, of a certain gosh. player? Or... I don't know. I'd, uh, just a very good memory about, I, again, with the first year I was in the Diamond Darlings, that just mm-hmm. stuck with me. It was the Pringle year. It was so much oh, fun. Oh, there was yeah. Pringle, Pringle, yeah. Pringle team was epic. Yes, yes. I just think the Pringle team was just so superior. Like that, the Micah yeah. Dallas, Nathan Detmer duo oh, was just yeah. such a good yeah. energy. Did y'all have to dugout. help supply the Pringles ever? No, no I, I wish we, we would have. That would have been cool. <laughs> there was a lot of free Pringles. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you are just eating all the I think that would that would be have to be my favorite too. It was just a fun fun year I yeah, don't know there's just a lot of energy and, then, and so is this year I mean yeah. Yeah. just starting out there's a lot of personalities so there, the is, there sure. is yes there is that's cool do y'all have a specific game or series that you're looking forward to the most this year oh gosh all of them I was looking forward to Texas because yeah. sorry but horns down always <laughs> like no so I was looking forward to Texas yeah Luckily, we took the win. So I'm I'm just looking forward to postseason. I don't know already. Oh, yeah. I'm just anxious. I don't know. Yeah, got, got to get through some tough <laughs> know. Yeah. 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 Starting yeah. tonight with Auburn too. Yeah. So I, I mean, upon research, I didn't know this that y'all were the oldest woman-led yeah. organization on campus. I think that's awesome. Yes. What's it like to be a part of something like that? It has to be so cool. Oh, it is amazing. so cool. But at the same time, it's also you know you just know that you have to uphold those values that were set so long ago and like the standards we don't want anything to change we want um all of the fans at Olsen to see us the same every single year mm-hmm. and um us to always just have those values that we've had forever and yeah good relationships with the fans and stuff. Yeah, I saw some old pictures of like old former yes. members or do y'all so interact cool. with them frequently or? Um, I have a few friends that are old members and they're quite a few years older than me, but they're not like way back in yeah. the day kind of yeah. girls uh-huh. like that. I would love, we had the 50th reunion yes. a couple of years ago, so we got to meet a bunch of them. It and was that awesome. was just, it was, it was awesome. They came so out on the field awesome. with us and stuff. It was awesome. Oh, that's yeah. adorable. Yeah. I love that. It was so much fun. Uh, so, I mean, that's all we have for y'all. Thank y'all for talking to us. And uh, we're going to be watching Diamond Dogs a lot more uh, at Olsen and Blue Belt Park this year. So, thanks for joining. Thank thanks y'all for so having much. Us. So, of course. Next, we'll be uh, talking ball with Cade Harris. It's been a couple weeks since we've seen Cade Harris, our lovely Texag student baseball reporter, but a lot has happened since then. What are your thoughts on A&M baseball through two weeks of SEC play? Right, yeah, I mean, I think it's been good. Uh, 
obviously, you know, not undefeated anymore, but, you know, that's just because the uptick in competition by, you know, a significant level. But, I mean, overall, I think they've done really well. Going to Florida is a really, really tough place to play. And so, um, you know, I think they did well there, even though they didn't come out with the series. They weren't getting, you know, blown out or anything. Um, they could have won the Sunday game. It was really close. So, you know, I think that series, even though they did lose, went well. And then obviously coming back this week and, you know, taking care of uh, Mississippi State at home was uh, really impressive. Just, um, you know, getting back on the winning end. Um, and, you know, Mississippi State's got a really good team. And so, uh, yeah, no, I just think it's been, you know, pretty good so far. Um, maybe want to see a little bit more out of, like, the bullpen or um, maybe some of the starting pitching. But, you know, you can't, you can't ask for too much. So Yeah, for uh, sure. It's, and it's been good. Especially on the midweek front, too, a win over HCU this week. Just escaping those midweeks unscathed, how crucial is that just to mm. long-term success in the SEC especially? Yeah, I think just even having games that are close like that are – uh is really important because you can find like finding ways to win is always you know important for later on when you're you know in a tight game mm -hmm. um you know world series whatever you know you you can rely on those uh past um experiences where you've come back and then obviously you just don't want to have any bad losses on your uh yeah. um your resume when it comes down to uh uh you know the end of the year uh coach Schlossnagel talked about it uh you know, he, he believes they're always on a bubble for something, whether that be uh, a regional, super regional, SC tournament, whatever. Yeah. But you know, so, yeah, just keeping those games uh, in your favor is 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 uh, important in that aspect for yeah. sure. Yeah, they've got Auburn this weekend, a team that went to a regional last year, maybe not at the same level this year, but they can still present some challenges. And what do you think those challenges are? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they've they've had a, a, a tough you know opening to a, a SEC play. Um, you know, with you know, but I feel like any team to play is gonna be you know, <laughs> yeah. a tough opening any in SEC this conference. Team. It's it's tough. Um, their lineup is still good, even though you know it may not be as good as Mississippi State's or Florida's like they've seen. Um, but it's still gonna you know present their their pitching a challenge. Um, and then they have a uh, their Friday night starter is really good. He didn't pitch in the uh, series against Vanderbilt, so they kind of got you know beat pretty good in that. Uh, opening game but Connor McBride he is a 2.38 ERA in 22 and two-thirds innings pitched this season so I think uh you know he'll actually pitch tonight since it's yeah. Thursday opening yeah. um so yeah you know that that'll be a challenge uh, for them to get past him in game one yeah as far as AM's rotation they're sticking with the same three guys um starting rotation wise how do you think that they have fared throughout two weeks of SEC play yeah it's been really encouraging um mainly with Prager and Lampkin uh, you know, obviously Prager was, uh, you know, roughed up pretty well against Florida, but for him to respond the way that he did against Mississippi State was, uh, you know, really encouraging uh, for his, uh, um, you know, uh, looking forward for or looking to the future for him this season. Mm -hmm. And then Justin Lampkin has just been nails uh, yeah. those in his two games so far. That outing against Mississippi State was really good. He deserved that big of ovation he got at the end of that. Um, you know, and Tanner Jones, he hasn't been bad either. Uh, I would like to see him, you know, you know, go deeper into games and, uh, you know, hopefully limit the, uh, you know, run output from the other team. Uh, but, you know, if they can get him going, too, then that becomes a, a really scary three that you're going to have to face in a weekend. Yeah. yeah and sure. speaking of a and rotation, we've actually got someone who uh, was very close to being considered <laughs> for a starting spot. That is none other than the Gulf Coast South Pitcher of the Week. Cade Bickham, this weekend, he was absolutely phenomenal. He came in with the bases loaded and slammed the door. Two innings pitched, no runs, no hits, no walks, and four strikeouts. Cade, can you join in here, Cade Bickham, and just tell us why Schloss didn't give you the call to maybe be the <laughs> starter this, this weekend in the rotation? How close are you to breaking into that starting three spot? I mean, I would say that I'm super close. I just, you know, I, I have some real good stuff. I just don't, I don't think I have enough velocity for Schloss. I don't think I throw hard enough. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, unfortunately, uh, but, you know, if he gives me the call, I'll be ready, of course, obviously. You are pretty notorious for being A&M Club Baseball's number one pitcher, and you definitely <laughs> dominate the zone. Can you talk about how nice it is to have consistency in your role Maybe sometimes we've seen you're a starting pitcher. Sometimes you're a reliever. How much does consistency in your role help you? 
I mean, it's all about just going up on the mound and just throwing, honestly. I think that Max Wiener's done a great job with our staff with that same sort of thing, just getting them to go up there and throw strikes. Um, you, you, when you think too much on the mound, that's when mistakes start to happen. That's when you start throwing pitches out of the zone um, and you start second guessing your mechanics and that's really where you get into issues. Um, and so, um, like, he, uh, like Cade said, um, Prager against Florida, um, kind of a rough outing, but he was still throwing strikes. He was just leaving them uh, over the plate a bit too much. That's why he got roughed up. But you'd rather see that than him give up some walks and they get free runs out of that. So Yeah, for sure. I want to talk to both Cades, Cade squared, about this <laughs> next question. Uh, little lineup. we got to switch it over. Outside of Jace, Lavala, and Braden Montgomery, obviously, have just been incredible so far. Who do you think, in your opinion, has been the most ultra-productive at the plate? We'll start mm-hmm. with you, Cade. Yeah, um... Jackson Appel has yeah. been really, really impressive. He leads the team in uh, batting average, hitting 373 this year. And then he also leads the team uh, with, you know, in players who have like 10 at bats, like who, mm-hmm. uh, I guess qualify for the stat. Uh, yeah. he, leads, he leads the team in on base percentage at uh, 543. So uh, just having him in the middle of your order after, uh, you know, going against Verhovach, Jace, and then Braden. Is not fun because that's a hard guy to get out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, it's ridiculous. Uh, yeah, I mean he he has been super impressive, and then just obviously uh, Gavin as a freshman uh, being able to hit leadoff and hitting four home runs already in SEC play is just crazy. Mm-hmm. Other Cade, your thoughts? <laughs> I was going to mention Gavin Grohovic as well. Obviously, he's been phenomenal. Um, ridiculous stuff um, from the leadoff spot as a freshman, like un unheard of. Uh, what he's doing is just I mean, it's, it's great his swing looks great and he looks great in the field at third base um you couldn't have asked for more from him and then uh I'm a big Ali Camarillo guy <laughs> I, I love the way he plays um I really appreciate just like having a singles guy at the bottom of the lineup uh every team needs a like you know a singles guy um and he's he's he, he plays that small ball he plays that you know southern California uh style of small ball and it just it's really beneficial for the team and um, obviously, he's great at shortstop, um, insane defensively. So uh, having him in the lineup is super huge for us. Completely agree. They're sitting at 3-3 three and three in SEC play now. If they're going to want to win the SEC West title like they did a couple years ago, got to start getting these home series down. Just how important is, is it to dominate on your home field? Yeah, and no, definitely just like you mentioned, uh, there's – 30 games in an SEC season, and you get 15 of them at home. Um, if you want to win the SEC West title, you're probably going to have to win, you know, the majority of your, your home series and, you know, most of your home games. So, yeah, it's really important for that way. And, you know, obviously, when you're not on the home, when you're not home, you're on the road, which is even more hard. So if you're not winning the home series, then... Uh, good luck on the road. Um, <laughs> Got to make up some ground. Yeah. In some way. It, so yeah, just it's really important. Um, you can't understate it enough. Winning at home and uh, you know protecting your field. Yeah, you've been to a lot of ball games so far this year, and I know you went to a lot last year covering the team. What's been your impression of the twelfth man so far? Have you noticed a difference in either like midweek turnout or just you know fan support in general? Mm-hmm. Um. Maybe not too much of a difference because I feel like the fan support was was really was there last year too yeah. a lot. Um, even though you know may may not have been the season that they were hoping for, I feel like it was it was there. But yeah, you mentioned the midweeks. Mm-hmm. I have noticed that yeah. they are definitely a lot more uh, attended. Um, just even I think it was we played a, a midweek game. I think it was the day basketball was playing Mississippi State, and last year mm-hmm. we played on the same day basketball was playing Tennessee, and there was nobody at the baseball game there. Mm-hmm. And there, there wasn't, you know, obviously there wasn't a lot at the baseball game before Mississippi State because, you know, basketball, last home game. But yeah. it was still a good crowd. And, you know, I was impressed by that. And just uh, I was listening to Ryan Prager talk uh, with uh, Bron- Ryan Broniger that yeah. was the other day. Uh, and he was saying that, you know, the games might not have turned out in our favor if it weren't yeah. for the 12th man sometimes. And yeah. whenever they're beaten on the stands, <laughs> like I would not want to be a pitcher in that environment. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> completely agree. Uh, for both of you former pitchers, Cade Squared, how much does a crowd chirp influence you, and can you deal with it? Like, Section 203 is incredibly... Some direct. Direct. <laughs> yeah. How do you deal with being Or chirped? even the banging on the, <laughs> yes, you Yes, know? exactly. Yeah. 
I don't know if he wants to go first, but I, I can take it. But yeah. he, the banging would get so annoying. Um, <laughs> I, I, it would just be rattling through my head the whole time. But I think when I hear like, so I, obviously I never played in front of like big crowds. So most of the uh -huh. chirping I heard from the other dugouts. <laughs> so I, when I'm out there on the mound and I hear that chirping, that fires me up because mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, if, keep talking, come up to the plate and we'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know. I, I, I like the whole uh, chirping from opposing fans. It, it wouldn't ever get under my skin, but the noises I think would just annoy me. Distract you a yeah, little bit. Yeah, be like, all right, shut the up. The ball fives. <laughs> Although it, it might fire me up to strike him out to get him to shut up. Yeah, but. that too. <laughs> Cade? Um, yeah, I'm with him. The I think the amount of noise like in a big crowd situation like that, it would be – it would be different for sure. Um, I don't. I haven't played in a massive crowd like that. I do get chirped at, you know, from the other dugouts, like you know, other players on the other team, like you said. Um, I, th I usually I just think that's kind of funny because, um, I mean, if they're not hitting, like, why are you talking? So <laughs> <laughs> that, that's my that's my thing. So I, it just it just it, I think it's funny and it just it makes me throw better honestly if they're talking because I want to shut them up. So yeah. Interesting way yeah, to look at it. That's awesome. Cade, thank you so much for joining us behind the glass. We need not just a Gulf Coast South Pitcher of the Week. We need Pitcher of the Year from you. So hopefully you can deliver on that and lead A&M Club Baseball to the promised land and hopefully get that call up from Coach Sloss. Yeah, I'll be waiting, Coach Sloss. Just, uh, hit maybe my take hit my line. Maybe taking over Nick's job as producer oh of this my. podcast, too. He may be coming for that. We need to so. send someone with a camera, just take film, so we can just keep seeing it. I know. We, yeah. We've started writing the stat line on the whiteboard out there, okay. but maybe we'll Hoping have that, to... like, when Schloss comes in twice a week, just one time <laughs> just, he glances at it. Just press play. Oh, <laughs> just start I'm sorry, rolling the footage. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> exactly. We're looking out for you, Cade. <laughs> we got Kate you. Cade Harris, thank you so much for joining us as well. That's there Cade Squared, the certified ball knowers. That's all we've got for From the East Side this week. Thank you so much for watching, and let's beat the hell out of Auburn.